Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today I've got something a little different for you guys. I thought, why not do a monthly reading vlog? Cause why not? And it's a special reading vlog because here's the thing about me. I enjoy TBRs, right? I enjoy making a list of books that I wanna read. However, I hate having to make decisions. I make decisions all day long. Like at work, I am a person who makes decisions and it's dumb. Like who thought I should be a person who is capable enough of making decisions? I don't know, but I hate it. And so I didn't wanna make decisions about what I wanna read. It's too hard, there's too many choices. So I got this idea from doing Steph's Read It Down Challenge, where she asks friends to pick um, books from her unread TBR and then she reads those books for, for the month. And then like a mood read. And so I thought, fantastic. I'm gonna have my friends make my decisions for me. And so for this, I actually asked Steph to choose my TBR. Now, Unlike Steph who gives us free reign to just pick whatever book we choose and desire, I did give her some prompts to choose from because while I was relinquishing control of my TBR, I still need it to be kind of in control. Also, I tested this out with Ray in August and I let her choose my TBR with like four different prompts. One prompt is going to stay the same. That went well and so I thought, yes, good idea. So this is what I asked Steph to pick for me. First, I asked her to pick a book in a series, first or not, didn't matter, just had to be a part of a series. She chose Son of the Storm by Sui Davies Akamboa. This is the first in a series. What's the name of the series? I don't know. And we may be buddy reading this together. Then I asked her to pick a book that she thinks that I'll love, Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. And let me tell you, I also think I'm going to love this. I have such high hopes for this book that I already went ahead and pre-ordered the sequel. I have not even read this book. So I hope she's right. I hope I'm right. Otherwise, I've got a book coming to me that I am not going to like. And then I asked her to pick a book that she loved. She picked Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. Oh, I haven't said what any of these books are about. And to be fair, I don't know. <laughs> and last, I asked her to pick any book in the world. She chose Bunny by Mona Awad. And this, I think, is about a girl who is in a graduate program and there's like this group of women and they all address each other as Bunny. I, all I know is that this is weird. I've seen very mixed reactions um, with people. I kind of started it a little bit yesterday. I only got like 20 pages in. Um, but already I have a couple of tabs because we just jumped right into the weird shit. So I expect this to be quite a ride. Also a very short read. Now I will be reading some other things throughout the month, but um, I feel like I normally read five or six books a month, like on average, right? So this is four books and whatever else I sneak in, I have some other things going on this month. Not a ton, I've got like a vacation planned and you know, I'm trying to enjoy the last bits of summer weather before it's all gone. I woke up this morning and I took my dog out. It was 68 degrees, which is basically winter. So I don't have that much time to enjoy the summer weather. Labor Day weekend. I'm gonna head up to the pool for the last the last time of the summer. I hate it. I am a summer girl and I just I'm gonna miss waking up to like bright sunny mornings, late sunsets. Anywho, that's that's the plan. I'm gonna go up to the pool, hang out with some friends, get a little reading of Bunny in and I'll keep you guys updated.
Hello there. So today is Sunday, September 4th. And I think my last update was on Friday where I said that I was gonna go to the pool and read a little bit of Bunny, which I did do. And then my friends met me at the pool and boy, we had a time last night, um, and which ended up being like an extended party because we took our dogs down to the dog park and uh, continued the party there. And so I didn't get a whole lot of reading done um, on Friday. And then Saturday, I did not wake up until like noon because I was so tired from the night before. And then we decided to do it all over again. So again, not a whole lot of reading got done yesterday. That said, I am on page 100 of Bunny. And what is this about? Not entirely sure. Where is this going? Have no fucking clue. Really, really weird. And I think I like it. As you can see, I have a lot of tabs going, like a lot. Um, the yellow tabs are notes that I have. The hot pink tabs to match the cover are for quotes that I like and then or I find funny or whatever. And then I have like these kind of magenta-y, purpley, I don't know. Chill are just like moments. And I thought they would be like moments where I'm just like, oh, this is interesting or whatever. And they are interesting, weird and interesting. Okay, this is where we are. I feel like I've been rambling about this and saying nothing. So, so far we have these five women who are in a grad program at like this prestigious university or whatever. And one is kind of an outcast, Samantha. She's kind of an outcast from the other four girls who refer to each other as Bunny. Like Samantha goes through this, her time at this program and she's just like, oh, they're dumb and I hate them and all this other stuff. But then one day she gets invited to Smut Salon, which is like this party that the bunnies have just amongst them and they talk about things um, related to their program or whatever. And so Samantha gets the invite and she's like, this is dumb, but I'm gonna go. Cause she secretly wants to go. She wants to be in with the cool kids. I get it. Um, so she goes to Smut Salon and then it, it's just weird. All of it is weird. I'm not really sure where this is going. Like, I wish I could say like, oh, I get what's happening, but I don't get what's happening. And not because like, I don't understand, like I'm reading it, I understand what's happening in the moment, but like, I don't know where all of this is going. I have predictions about um, what may happen to some of the characters but I think that they're all probably wrong because this book just keeps, it doesn't even take turns so much as it's just like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain this. It's very visceral. Um, there is a lot of description of like, Samantha wanting weird things to happen to these people, um, imagining weird things happening to these people. When they read like the stories that they've been writing, it's just, weird that is the only word that i have for this is weird um i think i'm going to take a slight break from this for a second not because i don't want to read this but because um i am clearly reading this with my eyeballs and i have things that i need to do with my hands which makes me not able to read with my eyeballs so I have the audiobook for The Black Flamingo and I am going to go do some things. I need to like clean up a little bit while I am dog free. I'm going to listen to a little bit of this and then do some cleaning and I will be back. Although I really don't want to clean and I do want to listen to this, but I really, really, really just want to read this. I am so intrigued. It's giving me like Stepford Wives feels like she's about to turn into one of the bunnies but like really weirdly I don't know is somebody gonna die would not be opposed to it so decisions what am I doing what am I reading where am I going what's happening I don't know I hope you know someone please tell me anyway I'm gonna go do things 
and uh, I will be back. So uh, it's been a hot minute and I feel like we need to debrief, talk about some things. Um, so much has happened. I don't remember what my last update was, but I'm pretty sure that a lot of things have happened since then. Don't mind my headscarf. I thought uh, my hair looks crazy under here because my mom, so here's the thing, I'm going on vacation next week and I was like, well, of course I'm gonna have braids and so I'll just braid my, my hair myself. And so I had my mom part my hair and that's what's happening under here. She parted it because parting is half the battle and it was a battle I didn't feel like fighting. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. We are here to talk about some books. And before I get started about the things that I've read and am reading and will be reading, we got a package. There's a book in this package. You know how I know? Because it's from Waterstones. See? There's a book in this package. And so let's just, uh, I'm pretty sure I know what it is because I have been diligently tracking it, but it could be any number of things that I have ordered from Waterstones ever. Also, sorry if you can hear my neighbor's dog who is going crazy right now and just not having a good time. I don't know what's going on, but I hope he's okay. So, we have the Waterstones edition of Babel. Isn't she beautiful? Isn't she gorgeous? She's all foily. We've got the sprayed black edges. Don't you love when covers are just like velvety and soft and buttery? Like what? what is this? What is this made of? What is this material? I would like to write on it daily um, instead of like regular paper. That, that's what I want. Um, that or receipt paper. Listen. Nothing, nothing is better than receipt paper. Pens just magically just glide along that thing. But that's not what we're here to talk about, pens, inks, caps, okay? We're here to talk about this gorgeous edition of Babel. I have not yet read Babel, um, but I knew it was something that I would definitely be getting to very soon. Like, look at this map. City of Oxford. Is this accurate? I don't know. Could be. I'm just really excited to like dig into this and read it. Not in this vlog and not this month, but soon. Soon. Anyway, let's talk about the things that I've been reading. Let's start off with Bunny. I finished Bunny uh, last night? No, two nights ago. And boy, what a mind fuck this was. I wish I could tell you what this was about. Like I can tell you what happened. I understand everything that happened, but like why it happened? I don't know. Um, what's the meaning? You got me. Um, look, and I've tabbed this up to hell, like with just, man, this was one hell of a book. Okay, so anyway, this, Samantha Mackey is an MFA student at this school called Warren. I think that's Warren University. And she's in this cohort with like four other girls and the other girls refer to themselves as Bunny. And from the outside, Samantha is like, I cannot stand them. They are so annoying. Why are they always referring to each other as Bunny, themselves as Bunny? Like, I don't get it. And then one day, and then Samantha even has a friend, Ava, who also makes fun of them and she calls them bonobos. That makes me laugh. I, I don't know why. Um, and then, but one day, uh, the bunnies invite Samantha to smut salon, slut salon. From there, I wanna say things like start getting gory and, and like weird and, um, but nope, that started before that. Like the writing here is very visceral and it's just, it's a, it's a lot. Like, I can't even begin to explain to you the things that are happening because if I tell you, you're gonna be like, Robin, what? What happened? And like, I want to, if you've read Bunny, let me know. Because I wanna talk about this with somebody because 
while I can't explain it and while um, it was just weird this is not the weirdest thing I've ever read the weirdest thing I've ever read or tried to read was the vegetarian not a fan but this was definitely up there this was definitely up there I had a great time I had a fantastic time with this it was weird and funny and um, you just never knew where things were gonna go with this. I thought we were gonna have one outcome. That's not what happened at all. And you may not like the ending or you may like it. Fantastic. It was not quite a five star read for me because I don't know, just, I feel like five stars are just like my absolute favorites of all time. This is not an absolute favorite of all time. Will I reread this ever again in my lifetime? Probably. That's a strong probably because man, what a mindfuck. I keep going back to like things that I quoted or like quotes that I liked. Like right in the beginning, it's what's the lesson here, Smacky? Don't jump to conclusions. Never lower your gaze first. Once you read the context around it, you'll get it. There's this one like section in here and my note was like, is this what my like feeling about this book will be and it's kind of but like not in a bad way even though this isn't a bad way that it's a piece of pretentious shit that it says nothing gives nothing that I don't understand it that probably no one does and no one ever will and that sums up bunny I don't understand it if you understand this book if you know what this book is about what it's supposed to be telling us you let me know I don't really care if it has a meaning. I don't need it to. I enjoyed it for what it was, and that's all that fucking matters. Thank you, Stephanie, for making me read this book. It probably would have taken me so long to read this, but I am so glad that you picked this. Another book that I finished was The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. This was about Michael, um, I don't remember Michael's name, but he's growing up in London. It starts as like when he's a little boy and goes through like his college years. Um, he is biracial and gay and he's just trying to figure out, discover himself, who he is, what he wants to label himself as or not label himself as, or what he thinks he should be or not be, how it's okay, if it's okay for him to be certain way or not and what that means for him for his family for his friends the people that he interacts with this was great i ended up listening to this on audiobook one day and it took me less than three hours to read this um i had a really good time there he does write poetry which is why i'm glad that i listened to it instead of reading it with my eyes not because i wouldn't be able to understand the poetry with my eyes but because i think it just lends itself to a certain something when you can hear like the way that the poetry should be read and it was fantastic i gave this four stars another very good read i actually think i gave bunny four and a half stars that's neither here um but this four stars had a very good time i would definitely read something by dean Ada again and i was very surprised because this is ya contemporary and i have not been loving ya contemporary lately but i really really like this and now I started Daughter of the Moon Goddess. I was doing this as a hybrid read and um, I'm pretty far into it. I am 70% into this book. I am so glad that I am loving this because like I said, I already pre-ordered the second one. I don't clearly don't know how this is ending, but I plan on finishing that up tonight. I'll probably like start on my hair and like listen to the rest of that. But we are following Xingyan who has grown up on the moon with her mother, the moon goddess. And she um, finds out that her mother actually lives there because she was exiled there. Um, she is a prisoner on the moon. Um, and she's there because the celestial, she did something to the celestial emperor and that like angered him and caused him to imprison her. And so um, Xingyin is not supposed to exist, but um, once the Empress like goes to visit the moon one day, she realizes that um, something is amiss, which means that Xingyin has to like flee her home and she goes to, I forget where she goes, doesn't matter but she goes on this journey and it is her mission to free her mother from being 
this prisoner that she is um, because she feels like she doesn't deserve it. And like, she doesn't. On her way to try to save her mother, a whole lot of shit happens. She like becomes the companion to the emperor's, emperor's son, Li Wei, and they kind of like fall in love. And it's great. It's great. And then it's like, I knew that there was, this was a fantasy romance, but for some reason, I thought that this was going to be more focused on Shingen and like how she is trying to save her mother, which it is focused on that. But like, we also get a lot of the romance. And then there's also Wenja and like, I'm here for it too. I have thoughts on who I feel like should, you know, win her heart. But, um, cause one, I'm just like, you're kind of a, he's not even a dick. Like he, he's genuinely a nice person, but like the things he's doing is not nice. Makes me want to fight him, like punch him in the throat really strongly. But yeah, we have some great friendships in here as well. So yeah, I'm having a fantastic time with this. I cannot wait to see how this is going to end if she completes her mission to save her mother, um, where this leads, who she ends up with. It's such a fun read. It's super fast. It like is so compelling. The writing is beautiful without being like overly written. I feel like I should have been updating more as I was reading it, but I just I didn't want to pick up the camera and tell you guys about it because I was too busy wanting to read it. So I'm probably going to finish that tonight. And then me and Steph started Son of the Storm last night. I'm not very far into it, so I can't tell you a whole lot about it. I think I'm like maybe 40 pages into it. And that's... I can't tell you a whole lot. But it seems like I'm. it's a good time. I'm having a good time with what I've read so far. And... I'll be back with another update later. Hello. Hello. Hi. So, long time no see. Hair is different. I braided it. it. Took forever. But, while I was braiding it, um, I did finish Daughter of the Moon Goddess. Also because Steph inspired me to read these books. Um, she recently did a video where she tried all of these TikTok drinks and um, she was like talking about matcha lemonade and I was like, I've never had a matcha lemonade. So I went to Starbucks and I got one. Is it the best matcha lemonade that would probably be made? I don't know, maybe, but um, was I gonna go anywhere else except Starbucks? Probably not. So let's do a little taste test, shall we? Um, if I don't like this, this never happened. We never talked about it. I'm sold. I'm sold. I like it. I I don't know. It's matcha. It's lemonade. Like it can't it can't go wrong, right? And it didn't, it didn't disappoint. And so what this experiment is telling me is that I should just let Steph make my life decisions for me. Maybe. Um, so Steph, if you're watching this, um, I will be sending you decisions I need to make in my daily life. And if you could just go ahead and give me the answers, that would be great. Daughter of the Moon Goddess, four stars maybe 4.25 stars. I, it took a twist in the middle that I did not see coming. I just knew that this was just going to be like this love story that was gonna play out. And then like, it didn't turn out how I thought it would turn out. It didn't turn out like bad. Um, did Shingen have like some moments where she was suffering from dumb bitch syndrome? Yes, but I mean, to no fault of her own sometimes it happens to the best of us you know what I mean like sometimes you're just living life and then you're just a dumb bitch and um that did not make me like her any less she was still out here trying to accomplish what her overall goal was which was to free her mother from 
this enslavement that the celestial emperor had um, had her under. I really, really liked this. Like I had so many emotions. I was so invested in all of the characters. I was invested in the plot. The writing was just fantastic. And like I, Steph, great choice. Great fucking choice. I will say I am three, I'm done with three out of the four books that Steph had for me. And it's been three for, for three so far. Like all good choices. Now, does this speak to like my taste in unread books? Maybe. Or maybe Steph just really knows what I would want to read. I'm currently making my way through Son of the Storm. Um, I'm not very far into it, to be honest. I'm buddy reading this with stuff as we speak. I'm terrible to buddy read with because I feel like I read so slow in the beginning until like something good happens. I can't even really tell you what is happening in the book because I'm really not that far in. I'm maybe at 100 pages in. I just haven't been um, super into reading something right now. I'm going to work on it a little bit today. Today is Tuesday. So I've got a couple of days. I'm going on vacation in a couple of days. And so I want to get as much read as I possibly can because I know that once I leave, I'm barely going to read anything. I have all these things downloaded on my Kindle. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to read. I'm not. I'm going to be asleep on the beach or drinking on the beach or drinking somewhere. Like, you know, I reading is not the number one priority. So I'm going to try to get as much reading done as I can in the next couple of days. So we've got a review for Daughter of the Moon Goddess and we've got this review for The Smudge Lemonade. And um, what else have I read recently? Oh, while I was braiding my hair, I started and finished I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Super hyped everywhere for good reason. She talks a lot about the dysfunctional family and the dysfunctional relationship she had with her mom. It's very obvious by the title of the book. Um, she's a great writer. I was not an iCarly salmon cat girl like it came after my time so I didn't know a whole lot about her but um I think she did a great job first of all it was chronological I love when things when memoirs are told to me chronologically because I can like place events as they happen and not like jump back and forth um and also like she just really delved into like her feelings about things and it felt like she was very open and honest it was really really good so I just got home with my uh Starbeads and um, I went to go pick up some packages which I knew what they were because they're stuff for my trip and then got a little a little package here a little water stones package now I got one the other day it was my copy of Babel which is here um and so I know I'm in the habit of shopping irresponsibly and never knowing or remembering what I bought but I legit have no idea what this is I don't remember getting a notification about it oh, just me struggling to open a box um so I have no idea what this is or could B. Oh, I pre-ordered this. I don't remember when, but this is Stephen King's fairy tale. I um, I forgot I pre-ordered this, and for some reason in my mind, this didn't come out until later in the year. Well, anyways, I have a new book, Fairy Tale by Stephen King. I believe it is about like this kid and uh, let's let's really read this really quick. He starts doing jobs for like this neighbor guy and um, there's a portal to another world where I imagine fairy tale things exist. Yeah, that was a pleasant surprise because I really was not expecting this. 
um and oh look there's like little um little pictures at the beginning of each chapter that's cool what the hell is happening right here what is this what's going on nice little surprise to come home to on a random tuesday i should start buying things more often and just forgetting about them so that i have surprises when they show up that was fun but yeah i'm home now from my little outing earlier i um going to go sit outside, read Son of the Storm for a little while, and then that's that's really my plan. Pack a little, maybe, probably not. Uh, maybe I should film something. I should probably do that. That's what I should probably do. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what tickles my fancy. So I thought I would come and with a little bit of an update on my reading, I figured I need to pack for the trip that I'm leaving on tomorrow. I'm mostly packed, which is very surprising. I've never been this well packed that far in advance. I was like almost done packing by Tuesday. It's Friday. I don't know what's happening. But anyway, I thought I would give you a little update, do a little packing. Um, I'm just really packing the toiletries and essentials. You know, the good stuff. So last I left you, I was just starting Son of the Storm and I hadn't really gotten too far into it. So now I'm about 35% into the book and at first I was worried. In the beginning, it was okay. Things were going all right, but not a whole lot was happening. And I was just like, this is cool. I thought me and Steph were gonna have another failed buddy read. We read Library of the Dead together and um, it was not a good book <laughs> but this is much better this is much better shout out to Jashana who I actually heard about this book from like she kept talking about it and raving about it and I think 35% in she's right I don't know but so far we have Danso and Ashemi. They are intended, they intended, and they are supposed to be betrothed to each other. At some point, um, Danso is kind of an insider outsider. Like he's in with the in crowd, but like he's the outsider of the in crowd, if that makes any sense, um, because of his like birth origins which he doesn't really know about because he doesn't know anything about his mother and his dad and his uncles like won't really tell him who she is where she came from and um he has questions because his skin is i think his skin is lighter so there's like some classism happening in this book there is some colorism there's a lot of colorism you know based in this book um but Danso and Ashemi, um, they're only together for like political alliance type of thing. They don't really love each other. Like I said, I think in an earlier update, nobody really likes their intended as far as I can tell. Um, and then you have Ashemi's mother, Nem, who is a badass. She's out here just doing all kinds of skullduggery and I like it. I like it. Currently, Nem is not in the best physical condition. Things have happened. Um, people have been attacked. People have been murdered. Because of these things, people are on the run. Now, which people? I. It's Danso. It's Danso. He's on the run. Now, I'm assuming that everybody's storylines are going to converge again because, obviously, but I don't know in what kind of way. Danso's on the run with the people that are suspected of creating these attacks. Sheme thinks that Danso is in on the attacks as well, or at least that he's harboring a fugitive who is a part of the attacks. And she's like, I'm coming for that ass. And I don't know a lot about like Sheme's motives and her feelings. She doesn't have very many feelings. I think she even brings this up at some point, but, um, I do have a feeling that she is going to kill a lot of people before this book is over. And I'm here for it. 
I personally would like to see her murder a lot of people. Whether it's like by her own hand or through others, I don't care. I just know that she is going to get to the bottom of whatever the problem is and she's gonna do it by any means necessary. She's going to restore her mother to great physical health, I just know it. And she's going to restore the family name because now she's been associated with Danto who's being associated with the fugitive who may or may not have attacked like high ranking people in this society. I am really excited to see where this is going. I'm having a good time with it. I'm going to take that with me on vacation. I have the ebook, so I'm not taking a physical book. I don't have room in my suitcase for one. I will be reading that here and there. I actually don't know how much reading I'm gonna get done. I have like a two hour layover, so I could probably get a good amount in and then, but I'm gonna be asleep on those flights, baby, <laughs> okay? One thing about me, soon as I get on that plane, I'm out, I'm knocked. I do not have a problem sleeping on planes. It's a great time. I'm also the type of person to have a cup of coffee and then take a nap right after, like an hour long nap. So, and still be tired when I wake up. So, you know, maybe I have a sleeping problem. But yeah, that's my update for now. I'm also listening to um, A Reunion of Ghosts by Judith Claire Mitchell. It is one of the books that I need to read um, for my read or get rid of books for the end of the year. I'm thinking about DNFing it. I'm not having so great a time. I'm not even close to being 30% into it. It's about a group of sisters that um, have a suicide pact because everyone in their family and their family line has committed suicide. That is the way that they've gone. The sisters are just like, you know what? Our time is now. And so they're going through the movements of, you know, writing their wills, getting their affairs in order, and then they're all going to do it together. And they're in the midst of writing this joint um, suicide letter. But while you're hearing like their stories and their backgrounds, you also get like the history of their families or of their family, the people that are supposedly cursed and are unlucky in love and things just don't happen the way that, you know, they want them to happen. Ultimately, they're just like peacing out. There's a lot of dark humor in it, which normally I would enjoy, but this just seems like not a good time for me right now and so I have been in the habit of if I'm not having a good time to just let it go you know what I mean like why suffer I thought it was going to be more ghosty a reunion of ghosts and I guess it is in a way it's a reunion of all the past family members and recounting their stories and their tales but like I don't care I want some gory horror just scare the shit out of me ghosts that's what I want and that's not what I'm getting. So I think I'm going to DNF it. But that's what I've got for now. I'm gonna continue packing because I have um, like eight hours until I need to get up and be on this plane. Waking up at the butt crack of dawn. I am exhausted already. in my home 
after being on vacation, kind of. The first couple of days were vacation and then the rest were just playing Survivor. As you can see, I've got some sunburn on my face, mind your business, but vacation was fun until it wasn't, until Hurricane Fiona was like, you know what, that's enough fun for you guys. And so I tried to read a little bit since our power got cut off um, while we were there, which that was interesting. Um, but I didn't get too much reading done because honestly, it was so hot and unbearable that I just, I couldn't focus on the words. I was, I just wanted to lay on my bed, just like a starfish. We all ended up hanging out together and playing games and it was still hot. But regardless, I didn't get a whole lot of reading done while I was actually in Turks. But I did get a lot of reading done on my way home home on the flight home. Um, I'm actually, I think about 70% of the way into the book. I only have about a hundred ish pages left. All right. So let's talk about this. Who do I like? Who don't I like? Danso, the main character, he is getting on my nerves. While I appreciate his idealistic ways of thinking sometimes, I just want to be like, bro this is really naive of you and to he's giving me um white man who just realized he has privilege and it's like oh wow i i didn't see the world like that and it's just like um all right sir and so while he is learning and trying to make changes, he's still very idealistic and he still thinks like, as long as we get to the certain place, we will be safe. Things are gonna turn out all right for all of us. And it's like, ah, I don't think that's how that's gonna happen. And then we have Lee Long, who I am liking. We have a guest. Um, so Lee Long was the um, person that came and as she wasn't an assassin, but she attacked the um, someone who was very high up in society and that is why they are on the run. In the beginning, I was really weary about her because she was just so untrusting of everyone. And I was like, well, girl, you're in this situation. You've got to like talk to people so that you guys can get out of this together. She has proven herself to be useful and friendly, not friendly, but useful and has the potential for friendship. And then we have Zach, who is getting on my nerves. Zach is Danso's second. A second is a person who is, um, who is supposed to take care of their charge. Their charge is Danso. And so Zach is a desert lander. He came from outside of Bassa and he immigrated to Bassa. And part of him immigrating to there is that he has to become an indentured servant so that he can, I guess, get his citizenship. I don't know. I don't know how that works. He's on the run with Danso and Lee Long because as part of his job, he was protecting Danso from a Sheme second. And I think he attacked him, um, a Sheme second. And so he's also on the run. But this whole time, he's upset with with Danso because he's like, if it weren't for you and for you being all idealistic and trying to run away from this life that you currently lead, I would not be in this predicament, which is true. It is true. But he wants to get back to Bossa so bad. He is willing to like, just turn on people. And all because he thinks that if he does so, then potentially the Basai government will look upon him and be like, you, I think it says it in there, like you are a good immigrant and uh, therefore you won't get the same kind of punishment as the other two. And I'm just like, it really, the way that Basa or Basai government politics works, it doesn't sound that like if you are the model immigrant that you are going to be more favored they're still going to look at you as an immigrant, as an outsider. You're never gonna be a part of the in group. And I think like it's, it's not clicking for, for Zach that that's what's going to happen. He thinks that all of this has ruined his life. And you know, honestly, it may have. 
I don't really know where this is going to go. I do know that Lee Long, Zach, and Danzo are on like in a lose-lose situation. Like I don't see how they're going to get out of this. And then you have the other side. You have a Sheme who doesn't really know what's going on, of course, because all she knows is that her mother was attacked and that the people that her intended Danzo were with have something to do with it. She knows that the person who attacked her mother was an outsider. And she's like, I'm going to get these outsiders. They attacked my mom and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get revenge. There's also like a high official who's trying to get whatever it was that the outsider person, the attacker was trying to get in the first place. There's all these different things happening. And on top of it, Ashima is just going through so much, trying to figure out like, what is her new role? Her mom is not waking up from this attack and is she ready to leave this household that's already, it's not fully in shambles, but like, it's not great, okay? It's, their reputation is not the best. So that's where we are. I have like 100 pages left. I am excited to see where we're going to end up with this. I'm really, really liking this. I think at the end of this, I'm predicting that this is probably going to be a four star. Not an all-time favorite, but definitely very strong. Um, maybe a very strong contender for favorite of the year. Once I'm done with reading this this and uh i'll give you an update later i am terrible about updating maybe vlogging is not for me i don't know to be determined anyways i wanted to give you guys an update remember when i said oh i only had like 100 pages and i was gonna read it and that was friday night yeah so what had happened was i went to sleep I've just been sleeping throughout the day and the night. Maybe vacation took more out of me than I thought, but yeah, I've been sleeping. And so I actually finished it last night. Yesterday was Saturday. But I finished it last night and I finished, I finished some of the storm last night and um, wow. Just, do you ever feel bad for talking so much shit about a character and then you're just like, ah, maybe I should have been a little bit nicer. Maybe, but it was so good. It was, you know, there were moments where it was slow and I was just like, what's going on? Let's, let's speed this up. And then there were times when I was just so annoyed with some of the characters that I was just like, mm, I, I could do without you. I can't wait to see where it's going to go. What's going to happen next where like Danzo and Sheme end up. So that's where we are with Son of the Storm. One glad that I was um, easily influenced by Yoshana to buy this. Super glad that, super glad that Stephanie chose this book for me to read because even though it had been sitting on my shelves, I don't know that I actually would have picked it up on my own anytime soon. I think I'm going to give this like a four and a half. I just need the sequel now. Like I need to know what's going to happen. I I'm invested in these characters. I'm invested in what's about to happen. Like, what's going on? Who's gonna die? Who's gonna live? I also started listening to um, One Day Will All Die and None of This Will Matter by Shashi, I don't know her name, I'm so sorry. Shashi Cool. I will know. The book is on the, the screen here. It's a memoir. I think she's a BuzzFeed, or she was at the time. She was a BuzzFeed uh, contributing writer and she lived in Canada and she's talking about growing up um, so far. She's been talking about like growing up with her Indian parents who moved from India to Canada before she was born. Yeah, like before she was born and you know what it means to like be Indian but also a Canadian and she doesn't really like always connect with her Indian roots but she wants to and like passing for white that she talks about colorism um, in the Indian community. So that's interesting so far. I think I'm about 20% into that so not like super far in. Then I thought what better way to kind of end this by reading 
the promised Neverland. I ended up getting the promised Neverland based on Steph's experience reading it. She, I think she did a video where she read a bunch of manga and like this is one of them. And something about, I don't know exactly what it's about. You guys know, I don't know what anything's about ever, but it has something to do with like creepy kids who like, they look normal. They seem normal, but like they're creepy in some way. I think they murder. I love murdering, you know? It's always a good time. So I think I am going to make myself some breakfast. I just got home from church, so I'm gonna make myself some breakfast, watch Steph's video that she just uploaded today, and then I'm gonna read a little bit of The Promised Neverland, do a little editing for a video so I can get that up this weekend, and then head over to my mom's for Sunday dinner. So that's the plan. That is the plan for today. I think I can do the plan. It's like, it's less than 200 pages. I want to say it's like 158 pages or something, but it's super, super short. And it's manga, so I should be able to get through that in no time. But yeah, that's the plan. Breakfast, watch a little YouTube, read a little. What did I say? Oh, edit, edit. <laughs> I was going to edit. And then family time. So... I will catch you all later. no see for me and not you because you guys just saw me like seconds ago um I'm terrible at vlogging I forgot that uh I was it is now the last day of September and uh let's just do a quick little uh, roundup shall we sorry if you hear all this crunching and munching I am dog sitting and the dogs are playing with toys things Please say hello to my to my house guest, King. Say hi, King. I think last I talked about was The Promised Neverland. I read it, I liked it, holy shit. I did not expect it to be that way. And then uh, I thought it was Demonic Kids, was not. Uh, but Demons, yes. Kids, also yes, but not Demonic Kids. I am definitely going to be continuing with that series. Also, um, I did finish One Day We'll All Die and None of This Will Matter by Sashi Cool. And I had a really good time with it. She talks about how her parents um, immigrated to Canada and how she is trying to balance being Indian and Canadian, being one of the cool girls and how it was just hard for her like sometimes she just felt she wasn't Indian enough and other times she felt like she was distinctly Indian and very different from everyone else I think she did a great job there were like really funny moments her dad I want to say it's her dad that narrates um some of the calls that they have he is funny I like him a lot but yeah I thought it was a really good read I enjoyed it I would definitely read something else from her if there was something out. So let's just do a quick little uh, wrap up, shall we? So all of these books, this, this large stack of books that are falling, I can't, oh God, dear God. This, this is what I, I got through um, in September. I'm very proud of myself. Uh, for getting through that much stuff. Now, I will say some of these things I did not talk about in this vlog, like I didn't talk about The Marriage Game by Sarah Desai. That's something that I finished early on, beginning of the month, that I don't even think I talked about. 
Um, I also didn't talk about Taming of the Queen by Philippa Gregory, which is something that I finished listening to just yesterday. And then I also started Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Allison. I'm not very far into it at all. I think I'm like, I'm only 67 pages into this, so I haven't gotten very far, but so far I like what I have read and I'll be continuing on clearly in the next month. And so let's just do a quick recap of the things that I did talk about in this video, because I'm going to be honest with you, you know, I don't, but like, what have I been saying this whole time? I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Your guess is better than mine because at this point you will have seen it. I have no idea. I could have been rambling on about nonsense and nothing for like days. I probably have. And so if you sat through this, God bless you. God bless you because why? <laughs> why did you do that to yourself? So the first book I asked Steph to pick for me was a book in the series. I read it. It was Son of the Storm by Sue Davies Okinbawa. And I will say one, I'm surprised that she did not choose the second book in the Farseer trilogy. I, I just assumed that she would pick Robin Hobb. That's what I thought. But I read this and I had a great time. I gave this four and a half stars in the end and so good. Like it's a little slow in the beginning. You're like, I'm not sure where this is going, but man, towards the middle picks up. You've got magic with the stone bone magic. Love it. Um, you have a woman who is hell bent on just killing people to get whatever she wants. You have a guy who, um, I, I'm not 100% sold on Dan, so I'm not gonna lie, but like he's, he's coming around, you know, like I think in the second book, he's, he'll be better. He understands his flaws now, kind of, and he's going to be better. And then you have Lee Long, who is the fugitive that is going alongside with Danso. And I don't really know like where her growth is going to be, but I am excited to see it. Maybe she gets the um, Ebor back to her people. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll find out. And then for a book that she thought I would love, she chose Daughter of the Moon Goddess. And um, she was right. I did love it. I had a fantastic, magical time. I ended up giving this four and a half stars. Okay, so the main character, Singshin, is um, she is the daughter of the Moon Goddess. And she finds out that her mother is actually being imprisoned. And so she leaves to go to the Celestial Kingdom. And she's trying to figure out a way to get her mother out of this imprisonment. And along the way, she, become friend she becomes friends with the Celestial Emperor's son, don't remember his name and this other guy don't remember his name either but like do they matter they do but you know we've got a little bit of love happening a little bit of budding romance we've get, got a little bit of betrayal we have at the heart of this a daughter trying to save her mother from what she thinks is unfair punishment for something that any mother would do to protect their child and I had a great time. I can't wait for the next book, which I already pre-ordered, coming soon. And then for a book that Steph loved, she chose The Black Flamingo by Dean Adda. This is about a biracial teen who's growing up in England and um, he's trying to just discover who he is as a person who has parents who are black and white and um, also like his own sexuality like he's like coming to terms with who he is just as a person and it's great you get to see him grow up from like a little kid to like um, a teenager a young adult because he gets to college quick read good time four stars I could see why stuff loved this I really really enjoyed it and then for a book, any book in the whole entire world, I appreciate that she chose a book for my own TBR so that I could get this down because God knows I needed to get this shit down. But she chose Funny by Mona Wad. And um, I think initially I gave this 4.25 stars, but I keep thinking about this book and I don't know exactly what that means. And I don't even know how to begin to like describe this to you in like a bite-sized snippet. 
because it's so fucking weird. But I really, really, really enjoyed it. Did I enjoy it? I don't know. It was so weird. Things happened. People, men were bunnies. <sighs> bunnies were men. They were also other things. Just a lot of bunnies. The girls were bunnies. I don't know. I just have one like scene stuck in my head and like, it's not gonna spoil anything, but like just a guy, somebody touches his gloves and like just goes off, starts screaming. And like, I don't know why that's funny to me, but it is. Damn, did I have a good time. And those were the books that Steph picked for me. Thank you, Steph. Because I, one, probably would not have picked those up on my own anytime soon, especially not uh, Son of the Storms. I also read, um, I'm Glad My Mother Died by Jeanette McCurdy. I listened to that on audiobook. It was a very great memoir. I liked how she was very open and honest and you could like just tell that she was being raw. I just talked about The Promised Neverland that was Steph inspired because I would not have picked this up if it had not been for Steph's video, I think last year. And so some other books. Um, one is A Reunion of Ghosts by Judith Claire Mitchell. It was one of the books that I needed to read off of my TBR before the end of the year and I ended up DNFing it so there's not much to say about it. The dark humor hit only like 20% of the time and the other 80% I was just fell flat and then what I did read was not compelling enough for me to want to continue so I DNFed it. Will not be continuing. We'll be unhauling it. There we go. That's everything that I read in the month of September. I had a fantastic time. I'm so glad that Steph picked my TBR. I have learned a couple of things. I have learned a couple of things from this. One, not choosing my own TBR was great because I picked up things that I would not normally have. Two, Steph, great TBR picker. I, I will be returning for more TBR picking edge. Three, I don't know what the third thing is. Maybe my third thing is that I really like weird shit, like Bunny. It's gonna stick with me for a long time. And that's really all I have. I already have my next person to pick my October TBR, so I'm really excited for that. And on top of that, I'm participating in Black Awinathon that's created by Brie over at Locked Petition. I'm very excited for that. I have almost a book for every prompt and I'm going to try to read a book for every prompt, but that's a lot of reading on top of the books that I already have asked someone to pick for me. So we're gonna see what happens in October. Thank you all for watching and sitting through the shit show of a vlog. And I hope you guys have a great day. Till next time, bye.